So as we're starting running records, it's a good time to look at the essay portion of the Foundations of Reading test because one of the two essays often has you look at a miscue analysis of an oral read aloud um, and gives you some symbols and then asks you to do something with it to answer the question. And so let's go look at the question first. Using your knowledge of word identification strategies. So the first task is figuring out what's being asked. And it's okay to take notes, like circle this stuff. Using your knowledge of word identification strategies, you, examples, use of phonics, analysis of word structure, context clues, identification of sight words, write a response in which you identify one of Daniel's strengths and one of Daniel's weaknesses. Be sure to cite specific evidence from the information shown. And that's it. Don't overthink this. This is just an essay question. This isn't really a written response per se. It's more, you got to remember an essay test, that's a genre. It's not, you'll never ever write like that again. Um, so don't worry about it too much and just think about answering the question. In fact, go back to the way you've been beaten since fifth grade to answer questions. TTQA it and turn the question around. If you just said one of Daniel's strengths is, and then you provide um, say, for example, context clues, and then you define context clues, then you provide two examples that prove he's good with context clues, that's all you need to do. It's a claim, key definition, two pieces of evidence for strength. Claim, uh, key definitions, two pieces of evidence. That's it. Now, if you have time, you can go back and embellish like the end. I always like to throw in a, um, a teaching tip, like something that I might do next for Daniel. It's not required, but these are being scored by human beings and they have emotions. And if you speak to the person as, um, you know, as a human and talk that you want to, you help Daniel and you, you can use your, you can prove that you can use your content knowledge about reading to help Daniel, you know, it might work. That being said, they just have to read like thousands of these. Like you're just locked in some room, just boom, 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 hammering, 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 reading tests. So you want to keep it clear and to the point. Don't embellish. Just answer and move on. But what's that mean? Well, let's go look at the rubric real fast. So these are scored on 4, 3, 2, 1. And if you go down here, did you answer the question? All right. Now look here. Substantial, appropriate, and application of subject matter knowledge. Honestly, this is just use the keywords. They literally tell you in the questions, like they give you examples. If you just use two of those or one of the, because they only ask for one, um, you, they, uh, and you provide a key definition that, ex, that ex, un, explains your understanding, that's all you need to do. And then you provide one or two examples from the text. So then a three response, let's look at the difference. See, it says there are relevant examples, high quality relevant examples. This is what we call key levers in rubrics, like what bumps this is a four and a three. So these are definitely, this is what we call a holistic rubric in a sense. There's our, you know, you're being measured on four different kinds of scales, but it's, you know, four, three, two, and one. It's, you have to mix and match what they are. So when you look at, damn it, phone. So if you look here, you're looking at high quality relevant examples. And at a three, some acceptable relevant examples. So you have, a lowering in you know frequency or the quality of the examples because they went from high quality to acceptable in some so that's you know the difference between do you want to put in two examples or one examples literally that's how these people are trained they're automatons that just score like you know dang 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 score 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 so don't overthink it and then you then you can look then when you get to the two and the one now you're not answering the question you're providing maybe inaccurate examples you're not giving definitions that's a key example and we're going to annotate um some of the answers and try to prove this uh correct but what we're talking about again is just outlining it as soon as you get this question you can just make that outline so for example so, for example, when you get, you could just outline the strength. You could just put, you know, you just put in strength. And then you would put in your, you know, what is the strength you're going to use? Um, and that might be, you know, so you could. So if you wanted to put in a, 
a strength, say comprehension monitoring. Um, you could, and then you'd have to give a definition. And they would, you know, this is when a learner um, is evaluating their understanding. You would be doing this quickly. Understanding, usually evident in pauses and self corrections. And then you can go and provide two examples. So you can go back to your text and find an example. So we're seeing here, Emily, all right, so where's her pauses, short pauses and long pauses? Ah, seems to always be around when she is uh, looking at compound words. And so we could write something like that. You know, and so you just have to put an example, you know, with the uh, pauses on unknown words. such as goldfish, and then you could get an example of a self-correction. Because remember, for strength and weakness, you want to have two examples of each. All right? So where it's another example that proves that uh, comprehension monitoring could be a strength, if that's what you decide to do. Well, let's go back and look one more time. Well, she's doing, you know, we have some corrections at fever and remember, and, you know, for example, pause and self uh, unknown words such as goldfish, uh, uses self corrections such as grammar for remember and copy and company. That's it. So real fast, you would just jot that down for strength and you would repeat yourself for weakness. So when you get the test, just do that. Just It's three bullet points for strength, three bullet points for writing, and then don't get creative. Just super TTQA it and just answer the question because that's what you're getting judged on. So be boring. Uh, here's Daniel and it says, well, identify one strength in, word, um, in using word identification strategies. One strength. Daniel has in word attack strategies. Dot, dot, dot. Fill in the blank. Then this is dot, dot, dot. Fill in definition. Dot, dot, dot. Example one. Also, for example, dot, 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 also illustrated in, dot, 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 and done. Do that for that, <laughs> and watch this. Boom, and just change the word to weakness. I mean, it's just, it's a formula. That's all this is. It's an essay test. It's not real writing. It's not authentic. It has nothing to do with your ability to teach reading. You just need to crank out and spit out a couple facts so that you can get a minimum of a three on the essay uh, so it doesn't pull down your overall score. That's all you're trying to do. You're just trying to game the system and get the, the thing done. All right. So that's one strength and one weakness. That's how you write it. So let's go look and now compare a few of the examples. Looking here at Daniel, to understand Daniel's reading capabilities, I made observations of his teacher's notes on a particular reading performance. A, avoid this. Like, no one cares about your meta. That's just filling up space. From these notes, I will identify one strength and one weakness. Again, you don't, that's just, you're just, you didn't answer the question. Just flat out answer the question. One strength is, one weakness is. Move on. One weakness, so that, that whole paragraph is just unnecessary. One weakness is that evident in reading is repetition. All right. Although this only occurred twice, so contradicting yourself, it shows that it can still have a tendency to rush through the assignment. So we could put the strength, uh, the weak, was that a strength or a weakness they were talking about there? Weakness. So the weakness in this example was repetition. Now, as you recall, when you're doing a running record, 
repetitions aren't ca counted as errors. So that right there should be a trigger to you. All right, and then do they define repetition? No, there's no definition. Let's look at the examples. So it says here, uh, it could be possible that he's repeating the phrase twice or he heard it out loud. Like it's just pure speculation. There's no, like you, you do not speculate in this. You need pure evidence. It says it repeats himself. There's a word that he just struggled with saying out loud. No, like nowhere is there an example from the text. That's why this item, if you write like this, you are going to fail the foundation's reading test. Let's go look at a different one. It's another weak one. All right, we're looking at the strong response. All right, there's a brief intro and it's set up with like a, you know, an introduction paragraph and strength and weaknesses. You can do that. Um, I don't think it's necessary. Like I said, these people score so many of these, just get to the point. Daniel shows both strengths and weaknesses in reading the passage about, aloud to his teacher. He's able to use context clues to correct himself. Uh, that is a strength. However, his greatest weakness appears to be his analysis of word structure. All right. So Daniel's use of context clues is strong. Right there. And then do they provide a definition? He often says an unknown word incorrectly, but then relies on the meaning of the words around it to correct himself. See how they weaved in that definition? We can look at that as a strength, right? As the definition. Context clues. All right, so you know you're right there. You have a definition. Let's look for example. For example, when he reads containers counter and can it, in the phrase container of fish food, Daniel realizes that it doesn't make sense and he reads the phrase correctly. Also uses context clues can be seen when he corrects goalish for goldfish and fib for fishbowl. He is taking meaning of the sentence. He did not self-correct when he reads spilled for sprinkled because he guessed the he guessed his guess still works with context. Like right there, that is a huge um key that they're showing that they know key understandings and that's the difference between a four and a three right there this line because it's a deep understanding of um how you would use the miscule analysis and understand that sprinkled and spilled work in context of the piece um but and they've almost four examples here so not even just the two like those are four examples that's why this piece totally wins so what you have to do for homework edu 407 is there are also another weak, all right, and another strong response. And they give you the answer. But I want you to spend some time and annotate it or outline it kind of like I was doing here. And really consider it because this is all you have to do. Like this is, would raise our pass rates a lot um, across the nation by just like spending some time figuring out how to game the essay. It's, it's all you really need to do. and. You're just doing the same kind of writing we've taught you when you answer questions forever. It's a claim, a warrant, and some evidence. Um, that difference between the three and the four is that special knowledge. That is what gets harder to fake. But usually if, you're, if you can score a three um, on the essay, that's enough to where it won't damage you on your overall passing ability. So that's kind of it. Those are my tips for the Foundations Reading Test essay.